A mother's dream is to make her family happy. These were a simple words of introduction of a former national basketball player and now a stay-at-home mom and an entrepreneur who is proud of the decision she has made by running her own business. I spoke with Penny at, at her lovely home and she shared with me her experiences which has brought her this far with her small family. After eight years of not playing basketball anymore, the sport was something her family had seen as a hangout activity that brings them together. Uh, basketball was something that my cousins and my my sisters and I, we all grew up playing. Um, when we were younger, we would have like youth activities at the church we went to. Um, even some of the young adults, we would, you know, get together every afternoon and just kind of play basketball. And so I grew up around it. My parents played it when they were younger, much younger. Uh, my uncles, my aunts all played it. And so it's it just almost like naturally, I naturally gravitated towards that sport because everybody I knew and grew up with were playing it. So I ended up playing it in high school. After years of moving back to Fiji, running two businesses and having a full-time job in Japan, she said it was something she saw as an accomplishment. So I have an online business where I um, market and sell uh, beauty and health products and I first became an entrepreneur when I started making my own products or my own uh, accessories, jewelry. I started off uh, making origami earrings while I had a full-time job and I was working um, in Japan and I um, came across these this beautiful pair of earrings which is you know made out of origami paper because the Japanese and the Asians love to fold paper and it, that just blew my mind like the idea of creating something to turn it into a business so that's what I started off with I started off with making origami earrings and um, it got a lot of um, you know like attention because uh, I was in Japan but I was sending my earrings back home to Fiji to sell here and um, and then I started this online business so I had two online businesses while having a full-time job so it was quite a hectic time <laughs> after my full-time job was done I'd come home make earrings and and also market my beauty and health products online so I had two online businesses and um, I think there it came to a point where there was one month where my uh, full-time salary and the income from my my two online businesses were pretty much like the same you know and so that kind of um, a light bulb moment just went off in my mind, you know, at, at that time. I was, I, and I just thought to myself, wow, if I can bring in this much income to match my full-time paycheck, what's not to say that I can, you know, I can do this again and again for the every single day. So um, I think that's when my, um, my passion, that's when I found my passion, which is, you know, to be an entrepreneur, a business. And so I moved home uh, in Fiji, to Fiji in 2018, and I've been doing this online business for the last year and a half full time now. Juggling motherhood and running a business from home was not what she expected it would be. It can be quite hectic because being a mom is a full time job in itself. And because I work at home, um, it can be hard for, you know, to distinguish what you know, when is family time and when is work time? Because when you have a full-time job, once you leave the house, you know, you're on the clock, you know, you go to the office, you clock in and it's just full on focus on work. Then once you get home, it's family time. But for me, because I work at home, it's hard for me to, you know, to kind of distinguish, okay, when is family time and when is business time, when is work time? Um, and also my daughter, because you don't ever get, you know, you don't ever stop being a mom. You're, you're on the clock as a mom, like 24-7. <laughs> and my daughter doesn't know that I'm at work. You know, she's only eight months. Um, and so when she's in her little walker, and sometimes I'll be running or facilitating a training on Zoom, you know, we have Zoom calls, I'll be facilitating a training, and then she'll cry for me to pick her up, and I'm talking, and she's crying in the background. So it can be quite hectic, and um, sometimes I have to juggle two hats at the same time. You know, being a mom and being an entrepreneur and growing my business online while holding my daughter that's crying, you know? So yeah, it, it's, it's quite hectic. But the most special moment she cherished with her eight and a half month old daughter was that she taught her so many important lessons of being a mother, especially being a stay at home working mom. So with my daughter, um, this happened just a few weeks ago, I think it was about three weeks ago, where she was really sick for the whole week. And um, it was just her and I, after the nanny would leave, it was just her and I. And when, it, when the nanny would leave, for the day, I, it was just my my daughter and I, and I didn't even work at all, you know, in that evening, in the evening times. And um, 
And I, w- I felt grateful that that I am a mompreneur at that, you know, when my daughter was sick, I could tend to her needs and I was able to console her, comfort her, play with her, you know, and, um, and still be able to make income because I have a business that I run online. And so for me, it was just, um, it was like comforting to me to know that I don't have to have a full-time job. You know, I have a degree, but I don't have to work for somebody else to bring in income and worry about looking after my daughter because I can do that myself, you know, at home. And so I was, you know, it just made me realize how much of a blessing it is to, for, to me, eh, just to be able to look after my daughter while she was sick and be able to make income at the same time to help pay the bills and to help you know my husband financially so um i was i was so grateful because as a mom you you really want to be there for your children you know you want to be the one to to take care of them when they're sick and to to be there for the important moments and i'm glad that i can work from home and do that and during her sporting career she shared the special moment with the team activities I think just all the team bonding uh, activities that we would go on and that we would do as, as a team. Um, so I, I had been training for the under 20 um, team in 2006, I believe it was. And we went to New Zealand and it was such a fun time. And, you know, in, um, in 2007, I went again to, to Guam and, and represented Fiji in the under 20 women's basketball. And it was just like so... Uh, such a fun time to get together with everybody like the team because we had to like learn how to play you know with each other on the court and in order to do that we had to like practice with each other you know and um, and do team bonding activities so that we could get to know each other better that way and all those things that we did when we were playing basketball when I was much younger um, that friendship has kind of like lasted you know throughout the years and now it's so awesome to see that there are so many of uh, my teammates from back in the day that are moms now or that have their own businesses but we still keep in touch with each other you know and that friendship has carried us throughout the years because of all those memories of the bonding that we had in our team bonding sessions. The Lawaki Kandavule said even though she is managing her own business from home it has also taught her to deal with outside pressure. Uh, some of the challenges I face of being um, a mompreneur is learning how to um, learning how to manage my time better uh, sometimes I can you know because I have a, a nanny who comes in and looks after my daughter and so once she's here I'm just focused on work and then once the nanny leaves it's just my daughter and I and my husband doesn't come home until a little later after he's done with work so when it's just baby and I sometimes I still have to facilitate the zoom trainings or sometimes I still have customers that I'm you know in the middle of conversing with and I um, I'm still learning that now is to learn how to uh, stop working (laughs) because it's time for me to be a mom now (laughs) and and that's one thing that I think is like one of the biggest challenges for me being a a working mom from home is just learning how to uh, manage my time. One of the questions I had asked her was how would she view the current pandemic as a mother? This was her response. For COVID-19 I guess you know for me I see it as an opportunity yeah um, and a lot, you know, when it first hit us here in Fiji, I was overcome with fear. And when you're overcome with fear, sometimes you don't think right, and sometimes you make like decisions that will affect you later on. Yeah? But um, when I, you know, as as time went on, I I um, had to change my perspective to seeing it as an opportunity. Like this can be an opportunity for me to adjust, to adapt to the changes that are happening now. And a, and a lot more people I know are going into business now, which I think is really good because it's almost pushed us to that entrepreneurial um, journey for so many people who want to make an extra stream of income. And a lot more businesses are, are you know, uh, pushing their sales and marketing to like online now because of the restrictions that we had during the lockdown. And so I see it as an opportunity for people to adapt and adjust to the world that we're living in now because this this is the n- new norm, you know. Being a young mom herself, Seru said her biggest motivator were the three women in her life. My biggest motivator as a mom? Oh, my biggest motivator as a mom is is my mom 
and my grandmother. <laughs> and there are so many other women. I have a, an aunt, um, but there's so many women in my life, my mom, my grandmother, my aunties, who have shown me the important qualities that you need to have, you know, f as being a mom. Eh? And for my mom, uh, she was a single mom, so she raised me and my younger sisters all on my own, and there's seven of us. <laughs> and so now that I'm a mother now, it makes me so um, grateful to her because when you're the child and you have a mom, you don't really understand, you know, the struggles that they go through. But when you're a mom, like it just made me become so much more grateful for all the, the, the things that she had to go through to put us through school, to put food on the table, to make sure we were fed and clothed, you know. So, yeah, I guess that you could say my mom has been uh, a very good example of um, a mother who will do anything for her children. She said she is also grateful to the love of her life for being very supportive of every decision she makes. You know, I don't think I would be where I'm at today to be able to be a mompreneur to stay home and look after my daughter and work if it weren't for the support of my husband. Eh? And he's been such a big motivator for me, especially because uh, when we first moved back home to Fiji, um, we decided, okay, so maybe you can be the one with a full-time job and I can be the one that tries all the business ideas. And so it's been a good balance. and. Um, and sometimes when I get discouraged on days when I, you know, when I have really hard days and like business isn't going well or I just feel really uh, unmotivated to work, uh, he's been always, he's always been there like pushing me and encouraging me and, and speaking words of uh, positivity because words are so powerful too. And so whenever we would have discussions about my, you know, my day and if I had a really tough day, he would really uh, uplift my spirits by speaking, I guess, words of life, <laughs> you know, into me almost. <laughs> and so that was enough for me to like, you know, to take a step back and like, okay, I can do this. Um, so I'm really grateful to my husband for his support and uh, because you need a hype man, you know, you need a cheerleader to help push you through the, the hard times. Penyet also wishes to share three key points to young moms who are aspiring to run a business. I think, um, you know, in terms of uh, those women, young moms who are wanting to go into business, I would say to begin with the ending in mind. You know, and to have a big goal of what it is that you want to accomplish. Because sometimes we go into business um, thinking, oh, I just want to make money for today, you know, just to pay my rent this month. But, like, what are your plans for the year, for the, end to, for the end of the year? What do you want to have accomplished by the end of the year, or by the end of the next five years? Where do you see yourself in the next five years? And so just having those goals written down and long-term goals and then breaking them down into smaller goals um, so that it's easier for you to know which direction you know you're going into eh? um, and then the second thing is to not um, not be afraid to try new things and to take risks um, when I moved home in 2018 the biggest risk for me was coming home and not applying for a full-time job and not having like job security but I had already built up my online presence and my business to the point where okay, I have something to start off with. So it was just easier for me to move home and begin building, you know, uh, continue building my business. Um, and I guess the third thing that I would, um, that I would uh, encourage young moms who are wanting to get into business is to not be afraid to put yourself out there. Um, you know, because when we want to try new things and we start uh, thinking, oh my gosh, that means I have to sell, <laughs> you know, and we get scared all of a sudden. But don't be afraid to put yourself out there because that's what it means to be an entrepreneur is you have to be able to learn how to, you know, talk face to face with people, to market your products or your services, even to handle rejection. You have to, you know, grow thick skin because there will be so many people that might have a negative, you know, uh, opinion on your business idea, but you got to grow thick skin. And don't be afraid to put yourself out there and to continue uh, being positive. A mompreneur she is in her family, Penyet Seru believes women need to build themselves up to be their own brand. That is the only way people will trust you. This is Nani Sesivo for The Breakfast Show.